Well, maybe you're, you're at the house and there's a knock on the door, unexpected. It turns out to be um, a visitor, a friend that you've invited to come see your house at some point, and here they are, they, they show up at the door. And you're greeting them, welcome, come on in and stuff. And as you're, as you're talking, they, you had invited them to see your new place and the rooms. And, and as you're starting to think of like giving the little tour, in the back of your head you're thinking, all right, is that room cleaned up? Is, is that room cleaned up? And, and you can't remember. You just start the tour and you're going along. And, and sure enough, you get to the room where, oh yeah, the laundry wasn't quite dry and we hung it up, uh, some on, on this chair, some on that chair, and there's the socks and maybe some underwear over here. And So you're, you're, you're coming by, you go, oh, let's not really look at oh, that part, right? And you kind of keep moving along. That feeling of maybe we might want to avoid that part, let's picture that with you having invited someone to Scripture. You've invited them to, to come tour God's Word with you. And you're thrilled. Here they are. They're for it. And you start to like pick up and you go through and and you come to Mark chapter 7 and wow, there's this conversation that Jesus, did he just call a woman a dog? Wow. What do we do about that? And he says, "I, I didn't come for you. And then this incredible story right after that where Talk about invading personal space, fingers and ears, touching tongue, right? You go, all right, is this maybe a part of Scripture we want to avoid, right? And kind of go past and get to the good parts. I would would challenge you that this is amazing, beautiful, intimate accounts of God's love, His grace, His awareness, of who we are, what we go through. There's so much to explore here. These stories are so rich. Mark walks you through. The whole purpose of the gospel is to reveal Jesus, just to reveal who Jesus is to you, right? And along the way, we encounter many different people, many different places, nationalities. What do we learn about who God is, whatever Whatever spot in Mark we're at, what do we learn about who God is, um, the circumstances that people find themselves in, how God interacts with them, what is God looking for in people? Let's, let's walk through these two stories. because they're, I think they're amazing. So the big picture, as you get here to Mark chapter 7, Jesus has just recently fed 5,000 people um, He's in the Galilee region, Jewish area. And then there's conflict with the Pharisees immediately after that. Very churched people. And he, he kind of quotes from Isaiah when he talks to them. He says, you honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. There's all discussions about clean, unclean, being in right with God. And as you're exploring through Mark, What is God's relationship to people? And then, this is what Mark throws right out at you. You want to grasp God's relationship to people? Here's a concrete example. And Jesus leaves that very Jewish church area, and he goes up to Tyre in Sidon. That's where where Queen Jezebel was from, King Ahab's wife in the Old Testament. And this this is what we'd call Gentile area. Gentile in all respects. You're not supposed to go in someone's home in that area. They're not under Yahweh's rule in their life. They're considered excluded from the kingdom. They don't know about God. Right? So Jesus arrives in that area. We see he goes into a house quietly. And as we see a number of times in Scripture, it's pressed on him to do some ministry. He's going to engage in ministry. A mom comes to him. Her daughter's in trouble. She's she's described as a Gentile woman. Literally, it says she's Greek 
Syrophoenician, but um, the translator is making sure you know that means Gentile. That means someone outside of the faith. So let's picture this. As she comes, what concerns would she have? What, what fears are in her heart? She knows there's something about Jesus, but what's she coming with? She isn't Jewish. She hasn't followed all the rules. She doesn't know all the terms. What will his reaction be? Pretty sure there's no signs. Gentiles apply here, right? She's, she's coming with just herself. And then we have this conversation. What a conversation. He actually affirms all her fears. He affirms her fears with this conversation about not having come for her. Seems kind of cruel, right? Mention of dogs. But she's convinced. She's convinced in her heart. Now let's picture that thing that Mark is revealing to us. She's convinced in her heart, in her own brokenness, of a need that Jesus can do something about. She, in that conversation, she admits, yeah, I'm not, I'm not deserving, but you know what? Even the dogs get fed. She's humble. She's in need. She's at that spot of trusting. And that's when Jesus says, there it is. There it is. That's what I'm looking for in people. That spot in your heart. There it is. She acknowledges trusting Him. Jesus has been talking about this special place to have one's heart at all along. Remember what he said to the very churched people? You honor me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. An amazing scene. He tells the woman, you may go. Your daughter's healed. Now picture this. Her daughter's far off. But in that spot of trust, consistent with her trust in Jesus, she does go. I think we can look at this account and say, certainly God seemed far away to that woman. I don't know all the stuff. He seemed very far away to her. There's rules, there's traditions that I don't know, there's, there's church words I don't know. Yet in this intimate, tangible way, the Word made flesh, God the Son, was for her. He made Himself available and brought healing to her family. You, others you know, are not too far away from God. You cannot get too far away from God. The Word made flesh knows all our brokenness, all our distance from Him. She came without the right stuff of church, but she came with this spot of her heart. And Jesus said, there it is. That's what I can work with right there. And what does she leave with? She leaves with contentment, peace, trusting Him. Mark is walking you through in this section about that spot of a, of a God far away but near. Seemingly distant, but, but near and caring. We see that he's, Jesus is up in Tyr in Sidon, Gentile area. He crosses through, back through Galilee, and now he goes to the Decapolis on the other side, the ten cities, kind of uh, another Gentile area. We know, all right, he's surrounded by people without a God-centered worldview. They, some people, bring a man to him. They know there's something about Jesus, right? And they bring him a man with has, um, who's deaf and has speech difficulties. Let's walk through what happens. Jesus takes him aside privately. So, no other influences, not for show, 
just me and him and not proving anything to, to anyone. Here's someone with troubles, with difficulties. And the Word made flesh is going to interact with him. So what's going to happen? How will God come into this person's life? Think through the details of that story. As the first time you read it, you go, wow, this is uncomfortable. What's, what's Jesus doing here, right? Um, but think through the encounter. What do we know about this man? He can't hear. What can he do? He can see. He can feel. And now with this amazing, intimate encounter, picture what Jesus does in quietness. He touches the man's ears, signifying what he's going to work with. Right here. The man can see, the man can feel it. It says he spits. Is he signifying the, the tongue? We know that he then reaches out and touches his tongue. The man can see it and feel it. His ears and his tongue. What does Jesus do next? He looks to the heavens. You know where your help is going to come from? All this is coming from the Father. And then he sighs. It's translated, he groans, he sighs. You can see that. <sighs> it's taking place. Something is taking place, he knows. And then the words, be opened. And he hears. We have our Isaiah reading from today. Further in Isaiah. On that day, the deaf will hear the words of the book. The Word made flesh intervening into people's lives. Close to someone who seemed far away. Knowing of his issue and connecting into it. Bringing his healing. I think there's beautiful interactions with the Word made flesh that we can see in these readings today. People with troubles, people with pains, people with brokenness that might seem distant from God. Is God there for me, or is it just for other people? The Jesus that Mark reveals to us is different people, different nations, the same God. The same God for everyone. We know that he shows how much he cares. Jesus comes to save all people from this incredible brokenness that we all have inside of not perfectness, sin inside us. And he sees our brokenness. And just like in this way, the Word made flesh comes to heal us and bring us cleanness, rightness with God. Jesus' life, his, his whole life, his going to a cross, his resurrection from the dead, they are for us. So that through faith in him, we have that, that relationship of cleanness, holiness inside us. In our brokenness. That's where we come to him. We come, he says, Come, I want that spot in your heart where you know you're broken and you know that I have the water of life for you. Our joy of walking through life is trusting in faith in Him. Healed, forgiven, through Jesus. Whatever place we find ourselves in life, whatever broken spot, Mark reveals God is good. Whatever has come your way, whatever situation you find yourself in, God is good. He cares. Maybe there's times we feel like we want to avoid showing Him some parts of our, of our life, some parts of our heart. And He says, I know. I know it's there. Open up the heart fully, and here's our relationship of forgiveness. So I encourage you, Reflect on these readings today. 
and let your heart stay in that spot that Jesus said, there it is. There's the spot that I want. And you can trust in his love for you through all your days, through all the things that come your way, him as your Savior. Amen.